Hello again. Well, my name is Abbas Tamori. I decided to quit a long time ago. But I guess uh, some of you guys don't want to quit me. So I'm back for as long as it lasts. I will continue this. I have no notes tonight to prepare about the topic that I'm talking. Uh, well, just for the record, today is 21st. Well, it's Friday. Friday night, time is 11.40. Well, last night I talked about uh, metaphysics. Let me just bring a quick example that of what I was talking last night. Last night, the question I put forward for uh, the people who want to know what's metaphysics, what's soul, if that exists or not, I uh, didn't have my cell phone tonight, I have it. Uh, this is a cell phone. It's my cell phone. Right here. And uh, I asked that, is this really a cell phone? Everyone in the earth says yes. Well, except those who don't know what the cell phone is. And I said that if I take all the material out of this cell phone and put it on the table and I ask people, is that a cell phone? People say no. And then I, if I make all the pieces and just heap it on the top, some people might say, oh, it could be a cell phone. But when I put it in this form, it becomes cell phone. The difference is this, that what made the cell phone is not this material, it's actually the design, the idea, that was put together by somebody, some inventor, someplace, he thought about it meticulously, years maybe, like a Steve Jobs. God knows how many formula he has to put together. So much work, years and years. Finally to design this. So a cell phone also has a spirit. That's the design of the maker which it manifests itself only if there is material. Without it, it's not dead, it exists in a book, somebody's recorded. You use that, you'll make the cell phone. I also said that to those who are thinking that what we know as a spirit in us, it's actually the result of our body. I bring back the same question on the cell phone. You made, you human being, you made the spirit of this cell phone, just like God made my spirit, you made the spirit for this cell phone. We all know this cell phone has not created its design. The design is a separate thing from this cell phone. The same way it's in us. My design by my designer is not my body. It just manifests itself in this body. The next life, which the word is life is wrong, life means this, biology, biological. The next level of existence, I should say, is where the body is not there, but the design is there. Now I'm going back tonight to the topic, because I've been asked by this young fellow. Answer to him, which I answer to a lot of you, P. And uh, <clears throat> when I go back to bring up the idea of there's a God, philosophically, mathematically, I've already done that. You go to my videos, anywhere from number 3 to 19, you'll find these kind of answers there. But he comes back and he says, well, you know, where did he come from? Why there's a God? What is God? Who made God? So these are the questions. I'm sure it's a question of a, lot of you, a lot of your people. Who made God? Good. I 
I've been asked this question by other people as well. I said to somebody, I'll tell you the same answers I gave him. And um, I told him, listen, let's say we grow up a little older and in the course of time, humanity comes to a point that we're progressed enough that I can actually have my own spaceship that flies at an nervous speed, unimaginable. I take you in my spaceship and I want to answer your goddess. I must tell you, let's go see him. And in this spaceship, imaginary spaceship, we pass the solar system, we pass over galaxies. On the top, we see this, you know, spiral galaxy of ours. We know that's where somewhere we are. Then we pass these clusters of the galaxies. We'll go find these super clusters of galaxies. There's many, many galaxies, you know, they look like a little ball from the outside, but we know what those are galaxies. Then we go further up to point that we see the universe entirely from somewhere. We stand on the edge of the universe and we see all these lights. And we we'll look at this light. It's nothing. Total darkness. Well, in this imaginary scenario, we are very, very well progressed. Like, I don't know, a million years from now. We have this, like a Star Trek, well, these devices, I don't know what they call it. <clears throat> so we put our devices to work to see what's in this darkness. It registers nothing. Not even a quark, not even a subparticle, nothing. Absolutely zilch, zero. And I go back to you and I ask you this. Look at the darkness. You look. And I tell you, how many are out there? If you say, excuse me? So, well, how many are out there? So there's nothing there. Well, I insist. Where did it come from? You say, what? What came from? It's nothing here. There's nothing that I can say there's one or two. I can count them. You're asking, where is it coming from? There's nothing there that I know where is it coming from. Why is it there? There is nothing there. Why is it irrelevant? There's nothing there. And then after we do, I'm finished with all these W questions of what and where and where and why and when. Then I ask you, this is God. There you go. And that absolute nothingness, this is your God. Do you see anything that you could ask? Can I even answer your question? Where is it coming from? Where applies if there is something? When if there is something? Why if there is something? There's nothing registered. But yet I tell you, all those universe, they need this empty space to be in it. Without this, they can't exist. What are we? In the belly of God? No. Because any word that you bring should be applicable to something that can be registered. <clears throat> or when it has meaning. You can't say in that darkness there is love. There isn't anything. There's nothing, nothing, nothing. Absolutely nothing. This is what Baha'u'llah says in the book of Certitude, second chapter. He says, I'm just paraphrasing. So there's nothing can prove he exists. Nothing can disprove he doesn't exist. Being a nothing, it's irrelevant. Nothing can prove his existence. Nothing can disprove it. We are not the reason why there is God. 
we can also be reason that there is no God. What kind of a scenario is that? Let's bring that into our universe. I've set this example before to you. Imagine the Mickey Mouse and the cartoons of Walt Disney. I like this example myself. If we were cartoons in the world of Mickey Mouse, could he think even what Walt Disney is? No. This is paper. It's two-dimensional being. I can't understand what flesh might be. There is no way for it to understand any other type of existence. Just imagine, although we're not cartoon, but there could be a level of existence. We are in it just like a cartoon compared to that existence. We will never know who that is. All we know is that there are five ways that they register things. We see it, we smell it, we taste it, we listen to it. We touch it. Can you imagine if there are other way of communications? If all these five senses of you completely is gone, you would never understand if people pass by you, if they touch you. Nothing. You're vegetables, literally. And then you say there is no other existence. This is just a question about the existence of God, okay? So, don't even get there. So, in this matter, is God creator or not really? What is the relevance of this God to us? Nothing. We're absolutely irrelevant to his existence. There's nothing that we could attribute him to that he made us. Because the moment you say God is created, then it takes time to create then he should be a person like us. So if we're looking after some higher being that we could give him some attributes to call him God, that is not God. In all the religion it has been like this. Even Muslims, Imam Ali, the successor of Muhammad, he says, all the doors are closed. The seeking is forbidden. You can't even seek to know something like that. This is in Arabic. The paths are blocked and the desire is forbidden. The seeking is rejected, he said. This is where we're talking about the nature of God, which we can't use the word nature for him anyways the essence of God. We're out that door. So now, we're going to look after this Creator. Who is the word Creator? Who is the loving God? Who is that one then? I'll use the color again. I'll give you another example. Did you know in physics, if you had all the lights, the colors, from indigo to blue and the red and yellow. And if you shoot them from all that area to a center, when these beams of lights, they all meet each other, they all cancel each other and the center becomes white. Then I ask you in that white, find me the indigo. Find me the blue. Find me the green. There's nothing but white there. There's a color. You can see it, it's white, but there's no other color in it. Everything has cancelled each other out in there. Just like in the physical, if you put all the colors together, paints, let's say, in a bucket, all turns black. In that black, you're not going to see blue or yellow or white or gray or any color. Well, I'll come back to this. The answer goes like this. Again, it's in the Bible, it's in Quran, even it is in the Hinduism, in the book of Gita. This three aspect of God, you know. 
the Father, the Holy Ghost, and the Son. Same thing they call it in Hinduism. So all the three is really one. The Bible says it's all one. So why do we think there should be a creator? Because very people were curious. This is how it came about. It's the first time how the people thought about it. They looked at a tree. They said, God, look how beautiful is design. It has fruits and everything. I wonder where does it come from? He was making a boat. He was making an arrow, you know, something. A man of thousands of years ago. Then he said to himself, hey, if I make this bow or a boat and it requires intelligence to do this, then some intelligence had to be behind a tree. Mm. An intelligent being transferred his intelligence to make that tree. If we say that tree does not need intelligence, just, just like to say that the cell phone does not require a design. Just put the material together, it becomes the cell phone. What is a cell phone is nothing but material put together. Sure, go put it together. No sir, you need a design. And a designer, like a Steve Jobs, don't have it. But many, many years behind it, you're not going to make no trees. Same thing is about the tree. So the design immediately makes us as a designer. Good. Then we know that he must have liked tree. That's why he made it. And they say, I like the tree too. I see similarity between me and him. Then it comes to me today. And I go on and say that, well, let's see, can we make God out of man? Yeah, sure. Every one of us potential God, creator, not God. Every one of us potentially the creator of this universe, this entire universe that we don't know what it is. Let's say one day we know what it is. Every one of us is capable of creating all of this. Me, you, anybody. How would that be possible, you're asking? Look at it, it's not very difficult. 6,000, whatever, 7,000, 12,000, some people say, took that Neanderthal and Homo sapien, came down here and found that in the nature, the rules and the laws and the material, and they put it together and built this house, this camera. That's pretty good after 6,000 years. We made a Toyota. You know, we made Apollo. Now I'm going to give more time to man. When the latest man finds out, good. We found a way that we're not going to die. One day somebody discovers that. That he found the formula that he could use that he would die under any circumstances. Like these crazy movies in Hollywood. He touches the people, people gave their soul to him. They die. But it just adds to his life. Like that he take over the entire planet. All the five billion dies and they give the planet all this life to him. This fellow is supposed to live 70 years, but now there's seven billion times seven, what? 49 billion, 50 billion years. Am I right about that? Yeah. The entire world of universe, the age of universe, this is about 15 billion. Now we have a man that can live 50 billion years. I don't need to go to the creation of the universe. I can assure you, after a million years, this guy will know every goddamn thing in this universe. You disagree? Give him a billion years. He has time, he has intelligence, and he's bored. He can reconfigure 
this entire universe. He says, I don't like it. I'll change it. He makes new quarks. He makes new elements. Puts them together in different laws. Completely changes everything around and created an entire universe. Is that too far-fetched? No, brother. No. Not been given time. What is God then, the Creator? He's a timeless, intelligent, willing person. That's then you and me. It's all of us. You don't have to think that He exists. Just look into yourself. Would you have the capacity? Of course you do. Look at 6,000 years we're here. Where are we going to be after a billion years? We probably change the entire universe. And if you're only with one, psych your psychology, common psychology. If you're intelligent, then you're so talented and you're lonely and there's nobody, wouldn't you feel lonely? Of course you do. Any intelligent man becomes lonely if there's nobody around him. Any intelligent man. A cow may not, but for sure a man will, an intelligent being of anywhere. Then he's going to do all these things to get out of this boredom. That's all it's underlying. Why man is different? There's a lot about man to say. So this God, let me introduce you to him. He has many thousands of problems. One of them is this. Some laws that he cannot change. Even he cannot change. Anything he makes, any design, it's always a degree lower than him. He can make another God just like himself. He can't. When he does, it becomes like you and I. God, how long it takes before we get to him? Whenever we get to him, we're still trillions and trillions and trillion years away from him yet. So, I can't make, I'm telling you, I can't make another God. If he could, he would not create none of these things. But he couldn't. He cannot make a man to do what he wants him to do. Willingly. I can't do it. If you think God knows what's happening, what men do, you're wrong. If God knows tonight a man is going to die because somebody is going to kill somebody in the street and he's not going to do anything about it, that's bad God, really. Or is powerless God as a dead God, a weak God. None of that is present about him. Neglectful, no. Negligent. He just doesn't know what you're doing. Because finally found, he has to make somebody something that he doesn't know what he does. How would you do that? Sure, you can. We know it today. Go clone yourself. Except again, your trillions of years, the clone is only six months, thousand, twelve thousand, whatever. It's just indifferent to your existence. You know him, but he doesn't know you. How are we going to save him from his loneliness? He doesn't want to know what we do. Oh, he has the power to know. 
He has the power to kill everyone if he wants to. Imagine you're a father and there's a five years old child in front of you. He's kind of pissed off and angry and you put food in front of him. He goes, mmm. Tell him, eat. Mm -hmm. Sure, you have the power. You can just bang him and kill him and throw him out. Would you do that? Which father would do that? No father. God is no different. He can't do it. But at the same time, you have the willpower. He doesn't know what you're going to do or you're not going to do it. But he has a consequence for the things, though. If you don't do what's going to happen, he knows it. And quite honestly, if you don't do it, he doesn't want you. Because you have to leave the second level of existence. And the second level of existence, your very basic element to live is to have willpower. If today you don't have the willpower to solve the problem by the thinking power that you have, you're no good to him. You won't survive the next business. You don't survive the next level. This is why he doesn't help me today. I want 50 million. I'm going to go change Canada. I'll bring the rest of my brothers and sisters in Canada, in the world, actually. I don't feel no difference about anybody. Turn them around. But he tells me that, Abbas, if I wanted that to be done, I'm not incapable, I can do that. But then, then it's boring because I took the willpower from the people. I just made them to do it. It's no good. It's no good. I don't want to do that. I want you to do it. I left it purposely undone so you can do. There's an area for you that you can show your talents. It's out of kindness that I left some work left for you. I rebuilt the Baha'i faith. But now it's up to you to understand it and to empowerment it in your life of yourself and your brothers and sisters. Can't do it, it's just too bad. Then you're Neanderthal, you gotta go. You couldn't solve the problem. You died out. You didn't understand the formula. The Homo sapien understood. They have married and remarried with so many species of human being. They survived. Their genes helped them to survive. They deal with the environment. The others they didn't do and they died out. So the basic level of existence is this. So Ali was asking me. Why can't God come like the power says, hey, listen, I am Baha'u'llah, I am God, me, I am the elder of God. See what I do? Ooh, jump in the air and fly and do a lot of enormous things. I told him, yeah, for sure people say, sure, you are the messenger of God. You are the prophet of God. You are the God. What else do you expect? All my eyes and ears and all the things, see things you do them. I says, how many followers I would have them? Probably all the people in earth. All of them. So what now? Things changes based on that? No. So you think on account of that I exist with this power and this side now, are they going to be kind with we, to each other? No, but that's what I want them to do. God has given such a, so many wonderful things. I could think of the planet Earth to have only five types of vegetables. One type of meat. Could be very boring. A couple hours of light. Very hard, you know, environment of living. But he can live. Hasn't done that. Has created millions and billions of all kinds because he's just so much he loves us. But yet he can't give it to you like this. Has to potty train you, brother. 
are you going to shit your pants all your life? Do you not exist? It's all there is to it. This is the depressing point, I know. But what can I do? Ali was saying that it's, you know, it's difficult. I said, there's 300,000 people Iranian down in Toronto. They're all exposed to the Baha'i Fede, to me, the same way you are. How come you come in and they don't? Think about it. Why? Why you come? It's because you have willpower. So many times the girls, they want to get you in the bed and say, hey, listen, I can't do it. I got to go see Abbas. See the guy on the side of the street, he went and helped him. And you got a blow to your face, but you said it's okay. You showed sign of Baha'u'llah in you. That's why you like him. Because he's your hero. He has all what you want to do. That's how people are interested to Einstein, to uh, actors, anything. Because they follow certain things within themselves and they can't reach to it. They can't get it. And then there's somebody ahead of them in the road to admire it. Well, if you have part of few elements of humanity in you, you're bothered with what's happening around you and you like to do something about it, then you understand Baha'u'llah no problem. Even if you haven't heard it, you're still a Baha'i. But if you have all the informations, memorize all the books, you're not a Baha'i. Because you have to have that willpower to do good things and intelligent things. We have the story of the bear, a man who was apparently had a little circus of his own and he had this bear and he goes and, uh, for a show and collects some money from people here and there and he sleeps and the bear likes him and you know, watches him all the time and there's this big fly, you know, horse fly, keeps sitting on the eye of the master, the man, and he keeps doing that and finally gets angry, he takes a big stone and bang on the head of the guy to kill the mosquito, to kill that fly. He killed his best friend. Ignorance is the biggest conspiracy that exists. The ignorance. There's not a conspiracy. So what did I talk to you tonight? I told you metaphysics exists last night. I again give an example. Metaphysics is independent from the physics, just like in a cell phone. I told you why don't ask this question about what God comes from. It's irrelevant, our knowledge about it. The God, the creator, is really the will of God embodied in Jesus Christ, embodied in Krishna, embodied in Buddha, embodied in Noah, in Adam, in Abraham, in Moses, in Muhammad, in Bob, today in Baha'u'llah. That's the embodiment of God. Baha'u'llah is God, with a limit. My picture is my picture. You watch this video. It is me talking to you. Imagine if it was a webcam and me and you are talking on the phone and you're asking me, Abbas, could you lend me a 10 bucks? I'll tell you how. I can't use this system to give you any money. All you see is my real picture. Baha'u'llah is the manifestation of God, only to talk to us. That's all. He can't do anything else. He's not designed to do that. Mirror 
could show the sun within it. Definitely a mirror that manifests the sun as the shine and everything else. With a limit. From the sun you see the light in the mirror. But you can't see the heat in the mirror. If the heat of the sun comes into the mirror, mirror and the entire earth will melt away. Just the earth does not have the capacity to receive it. All of the entire universe is nothing to, to receive that. It's, this, it's a dot, little dot in front of that huge God. God cannot fit in. But yet, it is a manifestation. Baha'u'llah is a manifestation of God for all his wills and the desires and he could do as a human being. He is there to show to us it is not impossible. It is possible for us to get together to fix the problem. So the will of God is responsible for creation of this universe. But this will of God is not even Baha'u'llah. Baha'u'llah is the manifestation of the will of God, not of God. Nothing can manifest God. What we mean, will of God. In the Bible says, word of God meaning the same thing. The will of God creates everything, or in the Bible says, the Word created everything. That huge power is manifested itself in the body of Muhammad and Jesus and Baha'u'llah and the prophets of God. That's the Creator, not God. And then, in that regard, He gets us so we can understand him. In this example, we are God, let's say, and we have a willpower, a plan. We write that plan, all of it in the book, computer. Then we go and apply it and do it. Neither the book and the design that comes out of us is us, nor what has been created by that design. In other words, Mickey Mouse is not Walt Disney. Or the design and the thinking and the plan of the whole cartoon is not also Walt Disney. Walt Disney creating Mickey Mouse in his head and then bring it up on the paper so we can see, none of those has reduced anything from Walt Disney. By creation of this universe, nothing has lost from God. Like a teacher talking. His talking could make all the students to become greatest man in the world and achieve it. But nothing is reduced from teacher. Just an example. An example. Only in it, you know, trying to convey the message. Otherwise, teacher gets reduced something from it because he loses time of his life with that 10 minutes or 20 minutes that he talked. But imagine in the case, you know, what thing comes out, that thing is not you, neither what makes out of comes out of that. This is why the Bible says God has created us in his own image. Because like him, we have a willpower, and our willpower creates things, same as he does. That's enough for tonight. I want to continue a little bit more about this to tell you what is man. What's this final journey? What's the meaning of all of these things for us? What's going to happen? What is this uh, next level of existence? I will talk about that tomorrow night. Allah, Papa, God, David, you, I'm tired. Jesus, it's 12.20. See you.